one is the time now. The coronavirus, of course, dominating the headlines this week. First, talks of a COVID-19 vaccine booster for most Americans. We'll hear more on that later on today from the Biden administration. Plus, there are the ongoing concerns over sending your kids to school with the Delta variant surging and no vaccines available for children who are 11 and younger. So we decided it was time to bring in one of our experts, uh, a doctor, to answer some of your questions out there. Joining us now live is Dr. Philip Levy, Chief Innovation Officer at Wayne State University Physician Group. Thank you so much for being with us this morning, Dr. Levy. My pleasure. First of all, let's let's start off with the booster shot because uh, we're expecting to hear more at 11 o'clock this morning from the Biden administration. It's already you know, really been a struggle to get shots into arms. And right now, just 55% of eligible Michiganders are fully vaccinated and could having to get a third dose trigger more hesitancy out there among people, even from those who are already fully vaccinated? Well, absolutely. I think we're in a challenging time right now because the primary goal is to get as many unvaccinated people vaccinated as possible. But also a, a primary goal or a secondary goal is to just decrease the transmission of the virus. And so there's probably a thought that in the early stages of vaccination, you're less susceptible to getting infected. And over time, as the immediate response to the vaccination starts to wane and your somewhat delayed response you know, becomes the, the primary thing, a booster shot will probably allow for more of that early antibody response and get more protection. And so the idea is if we can't get everyone vaccinated, the people who are vaccinated, we can give them a little extra oomph to decrease the likelihood that they would even get infected in the first place. Well, let's talk about the, you know, the millions of Americans who received the single dose Johnson and Johnson vaccine. What do they need to know about possibly getting a booster? Because right now we're only talking about booster shots expected to begin as early as mid to late September. Once the FDA formally approves that for people who receive the Pfizer or Moderna vaccines. Yeah, the, the uh, it's, there's uncertainty around the J&J vaccine. It's a different type of vaccine than the mRNA vaccines, which are both Pfizer and, and Moderna. I, I think we're going to be heading towards booster vaccinations for the J&J. It's just it's a little it's a different type of thing. It's a, you know, it's what's called an attenuated virus vaccine. And there's less uh, information around safety of boosters and necessity of boosters. The one thing we do know is that the J&J vaccine is definitely less effective. Uh, than the Moderna and Pfizer. And you may see recommendations that say people who got the J&J &J should maybe cross over and get a Pfizer or Moderna. Some people in other countries have been doing things like that. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's some of the next recommendation that comes out. Well, we did have a, a viewer question for you this morning, Dr. Levy. This one pertains to masking in schools, a hot topic right now. We asked our Facebook followers what they wanted to know. And Jessica Cruz weighed in with, uh, it's a two-part question. Quote, do you think it's in the best interest to make masks optional in regards to safety, health and mental health of students? And will this lead to depression due to alienating alienation rather and bullying? And I think it's important to think of the second question first. When you make things voluntary, you create the opportunity for differences of opinion and then you create opportunity for, um, you know, group mentality and one group versus another group. And that's not really what this is about. The problem here is that the masks have become such a political consideration. And the reality is that we all want to protect our children. And the best way to protect our children is to get everyone who's eligible vaccinated. And short of that, decrease the likelihood of transmission to those children. The way we can do that is by masking. We know that masking prevents the virus from being transmitted or at least minish, you know, minimizes the virus transmission from person to person. You do that, you keep kids spaced away. You have a decreased likelihood of kids getting infected. So I, I think a mandate is a tough word, right? But at the end of the day, you really want to hope that people are going to do the right thing. And the mandates only have to be in place when people aren't doing the right thing. So important, Dr. Philip Levy, Chief Innovation Officer at Wayne Health. Thank you so much for being with us today.